Oryx is Destiny's most iconic villain. He was menacing. He had a story of revenge. New enemies made out of other enemies of Destiny's world. A whole year built around this villain, and a raid with the most encounters Destiny had ever seen. This is the only boss to be the campaign's final enemy and the raid's final enemy. Oryx was fitting of the name King, but on September 18th of 2015, and after 6 hours and 40 minutes, the world's first team of Gathalion, Professor Broman, T-Rex, Gunny, Rebelize, and Char shot Oryx into space. No damage. Chest, 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 chest. Yes! Fuck yeah! This would result in many quests, many missions, and many memories for the Destiny community. Oryx became the ultimate raid boss for the game's ultimate year of fun, and the Destiny community would only want to live in this raid for a long time. Some players found the challenge of Oryx difficult, and others found a different kind of challenge, a sort of challenge that seemed incomprehensible. This is the untold story of how the Destiny community came together to beat Oryx, the Taken King, solo. Quick announcements because this video is going to get filled with them. We have Oryx merch that is limited time. Link in the description from the wonderful Nogi-san in multiple colors. We also have the raid cast this Friday for every single team racing. I'm going to be casting them live on Twitch at F 1997 Be there Friday morning. And then finally, we have... Gratches. Austin Loss. Gratis. Miente. Free. Code Evan at checkout is free shipping worldwide on gamer subs. I know a lot of you live international. This is your opportunity to get gamer subs without having to pay those import fees. Code Evan at checkout. Some footage in this video is from players around the community. Their links will be in the description of this video as well as the music too. One note is that this is an old story with a ton of people playing roles in discovering solo Oryx strategies. So there's some names that may be missed here, but their legacy on this challenge isn't to be forgotten. Oryx was defeated on September 18th of 2015, but quickly after, players were sitting in the encounter immediately mapping out strategies to solo him. You may wonder why. Was it curiosity? Was it the sheer challenge? Or was it inspiration from the past? You see, back on December 18th of 2014, a player named Slayeridge posted the first ever solo of a Destiny raid boss to his channel, The Legend himself. Slayer's video was game-changing. After the legendary kill of Crota, this quickly began the era of Crota becoming a meme to the Destiny community. And with the memes came the meme kills. This video now sits at well over 1 million views for Slayer Ridge, and the legend himself would forever be etched into gaming greatness like our friend Let Me Solo Her this year. Back to King's Fall, it's now easy to see why players would lick their lips at the opportunity to join the legend himself in gaming glory, but this boss was a different level of challenge. You see, the barriers to kill Oryx are a lot higher than Crota. And the amount of patience and dedication to this challenge takes Oryx to a whole nother level. The legend himself may have opened the door to solo challenges in Destiny, but Oryx was the next great mountain.
to climb. To understand how the solo was pulled off, you need to understand how the fight works. Oryx's encounter is one of the most unique fights in all of Destiny, testing a player's patience and adaptability more than anything else. Oryx has a guaranteed four reset phases, meaning that no matter what you do, at the minimum you will have to fight Oryx through a long fight. Normally a reset phase is when you finish damage, then go back to the mechanics you're used to. For Oryx, this reset phase and start of the encounter is when he goes to a plate to slam his fist down. Unlike other raid bosses though, Oryx's reset isn't after damage, it's after some other attacks. To start this encounter, a player needs to walk up to the Taken Light and Oryx will peep over the edge. The room layout here is four players symmetrically placed on each sector of the room, and two large pillars where the daughters of Oryx were killed. The room is otherwise relatively flat, but with some space to work with around the corners and a path in the middle. Once the encounter started, some enemies needed to be cleared in the front of the room. Then Oryx went to either of the front two plates, with the right side usually being his pick. Oryx slams his fist down on the plate and raises it, leaving a Taken Spark in its place. Normally there are six players for this encounter needing to pull it off efficiently. Four plate holders, one floater to help where it's needed, and one relic runner. The plate holder's responsibility is to jump on the plates in the counterclockwise order so the relic runner can jump on platforms the plate holders have created so the relic runners can run in a path and grab the spark. If the order is incorrect, then the path won't be solid for the runner and they will fall thus needing the plate holders to jump back on to complete a correct order. While the plate holders are on, the relic runner completes the obstacle course and grabs the spark. Once the spark is grabbed, a hive tomb ship will fly in and probably dink some teammates not paying attention. This ship drops off a vessel of oryx with an aura around it. The relic runner needs to take the spark they grabbed and dunk it on this knight allowing for them to kill the knight with the rest of the team. Okay, so for the plate holders, while the relic runner was running, plate holders would get a light eater ogre to spawn every time the relic runner passed their plates. They would always come out of the ground in the same corner associated to the plates. After the ogres were killed, they dropped the taken bomb, and after the spark was collected, plate holders could jump off of their plates. The floater's role in all of this was to just kill mobs and help with the ogres, all the while communicating the flow of the fight. Once the ogres were dead and the vessel was dunked on, the whole team met to kill the vessel, and once killed, the aura was the safe haven that no attacks could reach you in. At this point, most teams opted to kill enemies for super energy and ammo, and then Oryx rose from the side of the arena to try and wipe the team. With sufficient damage to Oryx's belly, he was stunned, and this is where everyone except the aura holder and the floater would run to those taken bombs. You see, Oryx isn't a normal boss. He doesn't take damage from you shooting him. He takes damage from a combination of bombs being blown up and sustained shooting of his chest. Four bombs and sustained DPS means exactly 25% of Oryx's health, but this boss is also interesting in the fact that you don't have to do four bombs at once. In fact, you don't wipe here after stunning him, so you could detonate 16 at once for a full kill. It's not as exciting as boss bakes, but it's unique to say the very least. After this is over, exploding or choosing to not explode the bombs, Oryx will begin the next attack. In Age of Triumph and harder difficulties, Oryx will send the players straight into a dome to fight the Shade of Oryx, which needs to be killed by the time all six players are teleported into the bubble or you die. But on normal, Oryx will put out his hand for an attack to all players. It's a spark that chases you around and explodes on you, but it's also very easy to counter if you run in a circle. At half health on normal, Oryx won't do this attack, but will do the Taken Dome instead. After either running in circles or in the dome, then it was time for a proper reset. Oryx had a max of four resets and five total phases before you would meet in Rage. Enrage was a stronger, faster, and much harder version of the fight, and there's actually great videos of players killing bosses on Enrage in Destiny 1. In Destiny 2, however, Bungie would change Enrage to just straight up wipe you, 
But sometime after, players started with a question. How can this boss be taken down with less than 6 players? It started with 5 instead of 6. No floater needed. Then 4. Then 3. Then 2. And after a long time, down to solo. You see, the barriers to kill Oryx are a lot higher than the barriers to kill Crota, and the amount of patience and dedication to Oryx takes Crota to another level. Now that you're familiar with the encounter, you probably have some questions on how the hell Solo was even possible. How would you grab the spark? How would Ogre spawn? How could you hit the bombs and stay alive while doing the sustained stun damage to Oryx? Ammo? How would there be enough? And ultimately, what kind of player would be able to have that much patience? It's an impossibly difficult test to imagine, but there was a community ready to jump right in. Immediately after King's Fall was cleared, a very small handful of players were living in this encounter. The same questions I'm sure you have are the same ones they asked themselves, and there are some quirks to King's Fall that these players discovered. One was that ogres would spawn without the relic needing to be run, meaning that the relic runner wasn't as necessary as previously thought. Oryx would also progress the phase without a trigger needing to be hit. An example of a trigger in Destiny would be the raid boss Tanix needing bombs depositing to start a damage phase. But with Oryx here, he started the stun phase without a relic dunk or ogres killed. The stun, just like the rest of the encounter, was made for 6 players in mind, so the amount of damage needed was around 700k, and most weapons weren't going to do that, let alone solo in that time. After some time of testing, the first real sign that this solo was really possible was discovered by a player named Gatsby. Gatsby discovered that with the weapon Sleeper Simulant, a solar heavy linear fusion rifle, one of the benefits of the weapon was the ricochet damage, dealing additional damage for any bounce shots possible. Gatsby discovered that Oryx's chest was one giant sphere, so any shots up close just ricocheted for the extra needed damage. This was part one of jumping over the hurdles this boss stacked up. The next one is something hand in hand with solo challenges in Destiny 1 but not familiar to any activity in Destiny 2, Self-Res. Self-Res was the ultimate Destiny 1 super that never returned to Destiny 2, and you can thank the solo challenge community for that one alone. Self-Res was available when your super was full and you were dead, which would allow you to revive yourself from imminent doom and bypass every single raid mechanic in Destiny 1 practically. It would give you very fast ability regen when you revived yourself with that super bar as well. It turns out that while the challenge seems to have been mostly filled in, it still wasn't possible, at least with the damage the way it was being done. If you remember, Oryx needs 16 bombs total to be slain, but with the current strategy, players were only luring two ogres at a time over to their side, and only about 10 bombs were being blown up in 5 phases, and that was on the best of runs. The concern was that there was only two ogres at a time being killed, and nobody was able to figure out how to gain more bombs. It seemed like a brick wall was in place, and getting 3-4 to four bombs per damage phase was the ultimate challenge. While players were struggling to figure out how to tackle this problem, the next phase of Oryx was on. Running in circles wasn't too challenging, but the 50% health on normal Oryx phase began, and soloing the Shade was the next major challenge. You see, the Shade of Oryx has quite a bit of health, and obviously will kill you after all players are in the bubble after a short amount of time. Keep in mind, Destiny 1 was 30 FPS on a smaller FOV and on a controller only, Controllers limit the range of motion a player can have, but they do make up for a lot of that in aim assist. Oryx doesn't play by those rules though, and his shade spends most of the time hugging the walls around the arena, making you need to constantly turn to kill him. The best method for the kill was snipers, but if you'd been doing the rest solo, sniper ammo was being used across the rest of the challenge. So how are you going to kill the shade? Especially given the amount of time to get the kill, it seemed like it was impossible, unless you had self-res again. 
supers regen very fast in destiny one compared to destiny two and with the help of the exotic bad juju players had a small window to kill the thrall inside of oryx's shade bubble this made it easier for not having to hit shots on oryx and easier to maintain consistency but oryx's shade could also be killed if players wanted to if timed correctly on the death oryx would leave the bubble alone and start the next phase reset however with this method oryx would also leave the shade bubble up the whole time since you never killed the shade so the shade bubble didn't go away and you left the poor shade on red the shade cheese is what it was being called and with this method there were two annoyances one was the final stand since oryx would be blocked by the dome but nobody even had a method to make it that far yet so that was a problem waiting to happen the other problem was ogres going crazy taxi this is by far the biggest flaw and the number one cause of wipes the ogres tended to almost always walk into the bubble and when this happens they are gone dead 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 this causes two problems in particular first you are now in a bomb shortage and don't have enough bombs for damage if you needed four bombs to win and both ogres walk into the bubble you can now detonate only two bombs and you will fail second you need all four ogres to easily acquire your full super every ogre that disappears just makes it that much more difficult to obtain a super which then you can use for self-res after the bombs detonate cheese may have seemed like the best fit since ammo would immediately need to be used on the next reset for ogres anyway so why rely on ammo rng when you can make it easier on yourself it's a long fight no matter how you cut it but players were pretty split on this method for the kill after several weeks of players banging their heads against the wall nobody could figure out how to kill oryx sure the rest was pretty much mapped out except for a couple of portions but the ogres and the vessel were the main issues until a player named error thought of something so obvious yet hidden in plain sight luring in the ogres previously this small handful of strat crafters were killing two ogres at a time hoping that by killing two ogres on the same side their bombs would overlap bombs need to be overlapped to give you that proper window of time to detonate the bombs and not die to one while you get the other one but this was a hopeful strategy at best since these ogres can be finicky error discovered that by getting the ogres weak yet not killing them they enraged the only problem is the ogres would sometimes kill each other but error eventually figured out that if you lured the ogres to the middle of the arena and tried to scrunch them close by killing them your bombs would consistently overlap thus meaning you could get the damage triggers to get three or four bombs at once so now it was possible in five phases to kill oryx with all of the knowledge there the kill was now closer and now more than ever players wanted in there may have been a small bunch of problem solving players before but it was now into the hands of about 50 people that were interested there was one last piece of the puzzle though something very very important that we haven't touched on and then it was an all-out race the other thing in the way was the vessel of oryx sure you didn't need it to kill oryx but the vessel was very frustrating to deal with as it would mess with your pathing and would consume the bombs it was something gatsby came up with after studying past runs something that really bugged him was how random the vessel was to take bombs sometimes and other times just straight up ignore them so gatsby started to notice that every time he would kill the ogres on the side where the vessel was standing the vessel never ate the bombs the vessel went one step further even and ran into a corner allowing gatsby to lure the other two ogres over this required gatsby to be able to adapt to different sides which was hard since damaging the ogres too much would inevitably lead them to kill each other now that the vessel problem had a strategy to solve it the stun was solved self-res helped this was the ultimate race to the finish about 50 players were going for the glory of worlds first but only one could come out on top 
Error just armed the solo community with the knowledge they needed to get the kill, and Gatsby did as well. But now, the race was on. Now that the solo was fully possible, some came to the conclusion that the Shade Bubble would be in the way of Final Stand. They determined the added difficulty of killing the Shade, and Ammo RNG was required to get the kill instead of having Oryx's belly blocked by the bubble. Errors stuck to cheesing the Shade, while Slayerage, Textbook, Tifu, Gatsby, and other racers were opting to just kill the Shade. This race lasted a bit of time, but racers were getting increasingly closer to that sweet, sweet kill. It seemed like Error, Tifu, and Gatsby were on the final lap, and Error with the Ogre strategy discovered was on a massive run. One blight away from glory, Error wouldn't be able to complete the run he set out for, leaving the window open for other racers. And in the next few weeks, and on December 3rd, it wasn't Tifu with the glory, but instead, the player who found a lot of the components to make this solo possible. The Great Gatsby. Gatsby's solo would be published on December 3rd of 2015, almost three full months after the original World's First kill. This kill can be credited to World's First by Gatsby, but I think every player who contributed to the strategies in this should also be celebrated. Oryx remains one of the longest fights in Destiny history, and this solo took a solid 15 minutes of near perfection to pull off. By the way, eventually, Vlad would be the first to complete solo Oryx without killing the Shade, and shows where to stand to get the final kill. Boom, dude! Fuck you! Fuck you! The raid boss that was thought to need six players to even begin had now been conquered solo. It's an amazing feat in Destiny history, and one that I can only hope can be achieved the same way Solo Atheon was last year. Gatsby etched his name in history, and from one Gatsby to another, can't repeat the past. Why? Of course you can. Oryx Solo is something I hope gets completed again. But just remember, whenever you feel like designing an encounter to be unsoloable, some players are very clever and incredibly skilled. And with three raid bosses in a row now being soloed in Destiny 1, only one remains. But that story is for another day. Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you want more content like this and follow my stream since I'm there every single day. Until next time, I'll talk to you later.